Here's a little trick for someone who uh, lives somewhere where the bathroom has a uh, fan on the ceiling, but the fan isn't on its own switch, such as my bathroom here. This switch controls the light behind the mirror there, and this switch controls both the light in the bathroom and the fan. standard brown ventilation fan. What uh, happened was I wanted to take the cover down here. I'm going to try and keep away from the noise, but uh, I wanted to take the cover down because uh, it was filthy as heck. Um, I doubt it's ever been cleaned since it was installed there. Lord knows how long ago. So I wanted to take the cover down and uh, just throw it in the bathtub and uh, give it a scrubbing, which I did and uh, I noticed uh, something interesting. Now the first challenge is actually getting the cover off because uh, it wasn't exactly obvious, at least to me, how to do that. Now we have the exact same bathroom fan at home and I've never uh, been able to determine how to take it down, but I did figure out here. What you do is you pull it down and see it pulls down like that, but then it doesn't come off. Now, if I attempt to kill myself here by standing on the tub. As you can see there, the cover is held on by these two metal ridges. And uh, what I thought at first was, well maybe you, you know, pull the metal ridges out of those plastic tabs there, but you don't. And if you attempt to do so, you'll probably risk breaking the tabs. But uh, what I found out was, if you grab on the thing here and squeeze it, it pulls out. And I suppose this is obvious to some people, but it wasn't to me. And I'll do the same for the other one. And there, the cover's off. This thing was so dirty, um, I didn't know it was white. I thought it was brown. That's the color it was before I cleaned it. But see, there was so much dirt caked in the grills there that it was actually restricting the airflow. You, the, uh, you could hear the fan run at a different speed between when the cover was on and when it was pulled down. Now, as you can see, there's still some dirt there. I, uh, I haven't been, a I haven't actively scrubbed it. I've, uh, I took the shower sprayer and uh, sprayed it, and that's gotten a lot of it off. And there's still, you can see some on the back here, but. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot better than it was. The airflow is probably a lot better now. But uh, I discovered something interesting when I got the cover off. That is a plug. Get a load of that, huh? I I, I wonder if they're all like this, but uh, I had no idea that uh, at least this one was made just a plug that plugs into an outlet right there. I figured it would have been hardwired into the ceiling along with the light, but uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So uh, if you ever live in a place uh, like this where they're both on the same switch, but you don't want to have the fan running because it's noisy or whatever, then uh, you might be able to uh, perform this little trick right there. Now. Uh, with that being said, if you're showering or whatever, you should have the fan on, or else uh, it'll get real humid and you risk building up mold and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm glad I discovered that, because uh, what I do is I just leave the cover off and uh, I leave it unplugged except when I shower, because this is quite a loud fan, and especially in the morning when I don't like to hear anything, I certainly don't want to listen to that while I'm on the toilet. Now, <laughs> this is a brown... Model EC50, 120 volt, 60 hertz, 1.1 amp, rated to move 50 cubic feet per minute, and the sound rating is 3.0 sones, which is kind of loud, but uh, it's all right. Um, it blows the air that way. There's a pipe under the ceiling here running that way. If you look on the motor here, uh, I've, I've tried to find a data manufacturer, but uh, I can't find much. I don't think there's anything telltale there. Now the motor on this, this is what they call a shaded pole motor. 
And uh, you'll usually find these on fans of just about any sort. Uh, you know, just regular desk fans or whatever. Stove fans, bathroom fans, um, fans uh, in heaters. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only application they're used for. Um, shaded pole motors are very useful for things like fans because, first of all, uh, they have low starting torque. Um, you know, a fan doesn't take much torque to get spinning. And as a result, uh, these motors are quite cheap to build because they don't have as much components. They're very simple in design, which is very nice. And uh, because they're simple in design, they're also usually quite long-lived. Indeed, shaded pole motors are uh, usually quite durable. Um, the only thing really that uh, is ever possible to break on these is the bearings. The bearings right there. Now, as you can see, this fan hasn't had the easiest of life. It's caked with dirt. Like I said, it's probably never been clean in its entire life. Um, seems like it could probably use some oil on the bearing there as well, but uh, otherwise it's running just fine. Now one another downside besides low, low starting torque to these motors is that uh, they require active cooling. Um, they need to have something blowing air past them or whatever to keep them cool. If I were to just take this motor and detach the fan from it and just run it there, it would eventually overheat and quit working even though it had no load on it. They just because of the way they work, they generate heat and they need to be actively cooled. As luck would have it, however, 99% uh, of shaded pole motors are used in fans, so it's not a problem anyway because the fans provide the active cooling. Um, but I can tell you right now, this motor which you've been running, it's quite hot. But uh, other than that, they're quite good and uh, they do a good job at the applications they're used for. They're also used in a uh, microwave and refrigerator fans, just about fans. Fans are the only things these motors are used for. I've never heard of a shaded pole motor being used, you know, to run a machine or anything like that. They're just not as useful for stuff like that. Now, how it works is, the plug here is connected to this thing here, which is a coil. This is a coil of wire wrapped around this white plastic thing here. Um, and that's the only thing power is connected to. Power doesn't go into this part or whatever, it just goes into this part. And this is a coil of wire, and the coil of wire is wrapped around this piece here, which is a ferromagnetic core, um, similar to what you'd find in a transformer actually. Now, although you can't see it here, uh, probably right around here, probably right around here at the corner, and probably right around here, there are two copper windings, you can't see them. But uh, how this works is, this big coil here induces a current in this copper winding and in this copper winding, or wherever they are. And those windings, those two windings, are out of phase with each other. So what happens is, the main coil here induces a current in each of the secondary coils. And because they're out of phase of each other, only one coil will activate at a time. Now let's say the first coil, wherever it is, activates first, and it creates a magnetic field which interacts with the rotor on the shaft. And it makes the fan go, eh, moves just a bit. And then the other secondary coil activates, and it makes the fan turn a bit more. And then the first one activates, and it turns again. And that's what happens, they go back and forth, working to interact with the rotor on the shaft through magnetic field and turn the fan. Now I'm going to show you one last thing. You might have, uh, you might have noticed this before if you've ever done this, but uh, I have a 9 volt battery here and if I touch it to the plug on the cord here, now the fan doesn't spin at all, but uh, You might be able to see the little spark there. Well, let me tell you something. That's a pretty darn big spark for 9 volts. And I'll tell you why it's such a big spark. It's because it's not 9 volts. It's a lot more. What happens is, of course, this is a coil of wire. This is an inductor. So, how an inductor works is, I'm only going to 
go into this very briefly. Basically what an inductor does is that when it's connected to power, it draws a certain amount of current, depending on any other things that's in the circuit, like any resistors or whatever. But uh, the inductor, a certain amount of uh, current flows through it, and the inductor wants to keep that current the same. Well, let's say, all of a sudden, the resistance of the circuit the inductor is in changes. So if the resistance changes, well, the current changes. But the inductor doesn't like that. The inductor wants to keep the same current flowing through it as before. So the inductor does something. Let's say there's a certain amount of current flowing through the inductor and all of a sudden the resistance goes way up. Well, if the resistance goes up, naturally the current will go down. But the inductor wants to keep the current the same. So what's the inductor going to do? It's going to rapidly increase the voltage. And it'll do that for a split second. And, uh... That's how an inductor works, on, on a DC circuit anyway. I won't get into the AC stuff. If it senses a sudden change in resistance, it'll just quickly, just for a split second, make a huge change in the voltage through it in order to counter that resistance to keep the current the same. What's happening is, when I put the 9 volt battery to it, a certain amount of current is flowing through it. But when I remove that battery from the plug, all of a sudden, the resistance goes way up. It basically goes to infinity because it's not connected at all. So the inductor is countering that by making the voltage go way up. And that's why you get that big spark, relatively big spark, when you remove the battery from the inductor. If I had to guess, I would say that's probably, oh, a good 40 or 50 volts, that spark is, when I remove the battery. That's what the inductor's doing. The inductor's getting 9 volts, and it's drawing a certain amount of current, a few hundred milliamps or whatever. And all of a sudden, I remove the battery, so the resistance goes to infinity. So the inductor, for a split second, makes the voltage jump way up to try and attempt to keep the same current. And, uh, that's that spark you get. This is the basic principle by which the ignition system in a gasoline engine works, at least some gasoline engines. I mean, think about it, the energy from the battery, or the alternator, or generator, or whatever, goes through the ignition coil, and the ignition coil is getting a certain amount of current, and then, when it's time for the spark plug to fire, whatever's controlling the ignition coil, all of a sudden, reduces the current considerably. And then what do you get? A spark. That's the ignition coil reacting, trying to keep the current up. And uh, causes a spark to uh, jump across the spark plug. So that's how that works. Anyway, I'm not too terribly good at explaining this stuff, especially since uh, I don't know everything about it myself. But uh, if you're interested in stuff like that, plenty of good places on the internet and videos on YouTube like that. But uh, anyway, uh, there's a, just a quick little video about a, uh, a trick you might be able to do if you have a bathroom fan that doesn't have its own switch and you want to shut it off. A uh, little bit of information about shaded pole motors and some stuff about inductors. So uh, there you go. Enjoy!